So in this one, we're going to just uh, talk about the like, kind of like working backwards uh, and we want to identify the rate of change. Now, if you've done linear functions before, you probably associate um, the rate of change with like slope. Um, and just as a quick example, right, if you had something that looks like this, so let's say one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and let's say we had two, six, 10, 14, 18, okay? One of the easiest ways to determine what the slope was or the rate of change would have been to just go through each of the y values and see what is the difference or what's the incremental increase or decrease between them. So from like from two to six, you added four, here you added four, here you added four, and 14 to 18, you add four, making your slope or your rate of change equal to four, right? Um, then for linear functions, right? Linear functions, meaning it is just like a straight line, there was also the slope formula that you were able to use. Here though, for exponential, it's not exactly the same thing. So we can't use um, this the slope formula here, okay? So we're not gonna use that. Instead, we, we, what we can do is just write like a table. So let's make a table. Let me see if I can just make that easily here. If I can just use these lines, functions. That looks pretty straight to me. Okay, this looks pretty good. And if we were to do that, let's see, what are some points that we can write down? So let's start all the way from the left-hand side. So negative one, okay, this is our X and our Y's. So from negative one, comma, two thirds. Then we have this one right here, zero, comma, one. One, comma, three over two. Uh, two, comma, nine over four. We're not gonna write them all down. Three and 27 over eight. So the same way that we did this, um, we can actually apply that same logic here. Okay, so what we can do is, let's go ahead and just start from the easiest one. So let's start from one to three over two. Now we know that for exponential functions, they're supposed to multiply, right? You're supposed to multiply by the same amount each time. So one times what number would give you three over two? Well, it doesn't matter what you multiply one by, right? You're supposed to get the exact same amount. So if we, this would be multiplying by three over two. Now the real way to check that is, let's say that we're going from this point down to the next point. Is it true that if I took three over two and I multiplied by three over two, it would give me nine over four? So that's what we're gonna check at the bottom. Three over two, okay, that's this first one here, times, three over two, and when you're multiplying fractions, you just go right across. Nine over four, so it seems to work, right? Same thing again, take from nine over four, if you were to multiply by three over two, do you get 27 over eight? So three over two, you get 27 over eight, and these are both true, so this tells you that, the, that our rate of change, also known as the multi, multiplicative okay so it's kind of like in the word it tells you how you're supposed to increase multiplicative comes from the root word to multiply rate of change is going to be three over two okay this is also known as our b value that's also our b value all right so let's just do like one or two more examples on this so here we have the same thing let me just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for you to see Right? It says determine, that, and there's that word, determine the multiplicative rate of change, also known as the growth rate. And I'm gonna keep intertwining uh, this y equals mx plus b, right? Which is linear and uh, exponential, okay? Because th there are clear differences. Right? This is y is equal to a times b to the x. Now, in a line, you only need to know the M and the B, okay? Those are the only two things that you really need to know to make a line. Okay, this would be the slope. That's the rate of change for, for a linear function. For an exponential, this right here, this, this growth uh, rate or the base, okay? This is essentially the rate of change. What are you multiplying by every single time? Okay. Um, and to do that, we can just go ahead and make a table. So go ahead and make the same table that we did last time. Let me just go ahead and just make a table really quickly. All right, so we have bam, 
and then bam. And we're just going to go ahead and just fill in, you know, whatever coordinates we can. So we know this is X, we know this is Y. Um, let's just choose a couple of those. So let's start negative one and two ninths. Let's start zero comma one. Uh, let's do one comma nine over two. Okay. And uh, two comma 81 over four. All right. So for here, we got to think to ourselves now. Okay. I like to always start from the easiest thing. One times what? will give you 9 over 2 and that should just be itself 9 over 2 okay now that doesn't really help us with any much so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try for both of these if I take 9 over 2 and I multiply it by 9 over 2 which is what I think it is does that give us 81 over 4 so 9 over 2 times 9 over 2 does give us 81 over 4 okay so this works so far now um, here, there is no number that I can multiply by, right? So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to like assume that if I take two over nine and I multiply it by nine over two, right? So I'm taking this, I'm multiplying it by this. I should get one. Okay. So let's check that out. Two over nine times nine over two. Okay, remember, we just go straight across 18 over 18 which is 1 this tells us that 9 over 2 is our multiplicative keyword multiplicative is the multiply rate of change so it's changing by multiplication by and that is by multiplying by 9 over 2 okay the last question that we'll do is right here and this is going to be the same thing what is the multiplicative rate of change for the exponential function below so you should totally just um, pause this right now see if you can figure it out okay all right so same thing we'll do here uh, oh man that's why I make the lines okay so let's make them really quickly bam bam okay so we have now X and Y and I'll just choose anything so let's choose from 0 1 2 3 and then what was that 2 1 comma 6 18 and 54 all right so now you gotta ask yourself okay uh, it says it's telling you that it's an exponential so we don't even have to try to figure that out we can also just just look at the graph and see that it's it's making like that uh that uh that nice curve so it's definitely gonna be that all right so now to get from 2 to 6 what do you multiply by okay, and that's gonna be 3 Okay, but does that work for them all? So the six times three equal 18. Does 18 times three give you 54? If so, and it does, um, this tells us that this is going to be our B, which is our multiplicative, or our multiplier, slash our base is another name for it, slash growth rate is another name for it. Okay, that's gonna equal to three. All right. If we were to actually just go one step further and make the equation for this, so like y is equal to a times b to the x, um, what would our a value be? Then remember that the a value occurs when x is 0. So when x is 0, the value is 2. So this would be 2 times our b, which is our multiplier, the thing that we just got this whole time here, 3 to the x and this would be the exponential equation for the function that represents what this graph looks like okay so we'll end it off here and we'll continue with another thing on exponential functions in the next video